Good afternoon and welcome back to Gun Lake Paddle Sports YouTube channel. My name is Jim and I have some good stuff for you today. I am back at my shop in the simulated camp situation. I've got a micro light trailer in the back, cargo light. I've got one of Cookie's Sewing's 15 by 15 tarps out front. And today I'm going to show you uh, a number of things. One is how to rig a tarp to keep you comfortable in the cool weather. It's November now and the nights are cold. It was 30 degrees last night. So to be able to camp and stay comfortable while spending most of your time outside takes just a little bit of forethought, but it's really not hard. And I'm also going to follow up on the unboxing of the solo stove that was in my last video so that we can see the effectiveness and the heat put out by the solo stove and also uh, the type of heat that we might be able to generate inside the micro light trailer with a small uh, heater today. So stay tuned. Uh, this will be a good one. I hope you enjoy. The first thing we'll cover is how to set up for a ridge line rigged tarp. I picked a couple of trees here. Just got a standard knot on this rope and it runs all the way down to a tree on the other side. This knot is a trucker's hitch. It's easy to tie. You can find them online. It makes a nice tight rope to hang something from. I use it for clothesline, a lot of other uses in camp for a good tight rope. Secondly, the tarp we're using is more than just a tarp that you pick up at the local hardware. This one is designed for backwoods camping, it's ultra light, it packs down small, but you'll notice it also has a lot of tie down spots as you run up the center down both sides, all the way from one end to the other. These spots are used for guying out the tarp, giving you the volume you need underneath it once you have it set up, and keeping it taut against the wind. I've owned this tarp now for more years than I can count. It's been in the Aquatico wilderness, it's been on the shores of Lake Superior, it's been in all kinds of nasty weather. It's had more campfires underneath it than I can count, and it's held up super well. I love opening the box that I keep it in. I store it in a plastic tub, and every time I open the tub to get out one of the tarps, that delicious smell of the past campfires is in there with it. So the other uh, defining factor on a tarp like this is all the way down the edge is also these little guy out points. And I've got little little strings tied to each one of these and they run the full 15 foot length of the tarp. And what I'm going to do with these first step is to attach those to the rope. So I'll do that and we'll get back on how to rig this tarp in a moment. We're back. It's later in the evening. The sun is getting low in the sky. The temperatures are falling. And we've got things pretty much set up at Camp Gun Lake. This is the tarp that was on the ground earlier. Attached to the ridge line up top. Got a couple of guy wires going out each side. And a cozy environment underneath. Just got the fire lit a little bit ago in the solo stove. Cargo light is set up. 
with the awning. So what I'm hoping happens is that the stove gets going nice and hot, reflects heat underneath the cargo lights awning, reflects it back off the cargo light, and underneath the tarp for a cozy evening of sitting out even though the temperatures will be cold. I've got a thermometer out here. We're still hovering uh, pretty near 50 degrees. And I've got another thermometer sitting on the chair in there to compare outside versus inside once the cool air really sets in. This particular cargo light is a pretty good example. And I think I can use it to help answer questions that people often have uh, particularly the questions of, do these things hold up? Do they leak? Can they withstand the rigors of camping and travel? This particular cargo light was sold to the customers brand new in 2015. The customers live in Michigan and they were retired at the time. They brought the cargo light to us in Elkhart because they were having some trouble with their roof vent. And when it got there, we found that this trailer had been sitting outside, probably an environment lot like this, underneath trees for the entire five plus years that the people owned it. They didn't misuse the trailer at all, but they really used it a lot. They told me that they had 320 camping trips logged in this trailer. That's a lot. But the important thing is, the trouble with their roof vent wasn't the fault of the roof vent really. It was the fault of just leaving it outside for five years and uh, allowing it to become covered with dirt and debris. So when I saw this trailer, the customers had contacted me back after getting their brand new roof vent and said they'd be interested in trading up to a newer model. And they were, they were overlooking at a Cargo Light Extreme, which they eventually purchased. So I made it my goal to see how much like new I could restore this cargo light to, which admittedly had only been washed once a year for five years. The finish is still very much intact. The roof shows a little bit of staining from the mud being up there for a long time, but by and large, after working on the bright work and working on the finish, probably for over 20 hours to restore the finish, it turned out looking a whole lot like a trailer that hadn't hardly been used. So I hope that answers some questions for people who ask me, do they hold up, do they last? Uh, I think five years parked outside and 320 camping trips later, this is a pretty good example of something that does last. So we'll get the solo stove going here while we still got a little bit of light and try to do some stove uh, assessment and see how much heat this little solo stove ranger can put out if it's as good as a campfire. I think it's going to be a game changer because I no longer have to pick a site based on where the trees are to hang my tarp and where the fire pit is. Now the fire can come where I need it most. So in this case, the wind was coming from the west, which is behind the tarp, all day today, probably blowing 15 miles an hour, maybe a little more. So I set the tarp up to block the wind, the awning up to catch the heat. We'll see how it goes. Stay tuned. Okay, I took a little break and 
had some dinner it's after seven o'clock let's see what time it is yep just about 10 after seven the temperature hasn't dropped all that bad it's about 45 degrees out but there's still a pretty good wind coming and going but you've got to see this stove in action I hope you can see it on this video but there's a nice secondary burn coming out of those holes along the top edge of the barrel making for a super nice fire and some real warmth underneath this tarp it's climbing past 50 degrees here under the tarp see what the thermostat says out in the front of the cargo light there it is it's about 45 maybe a little less outside but the wind makes that feel a little bit closer to 40 or less inside the cargo light we have this ceramic heater running and the temperature inside the unit after it's been running for an hour or so. There we are. It's a nice, comfortable 60 degrees inside. So we've got 15, at least 15 degrees warmer inside the cargo light. get a focus here and climbing past 50 on the chair next to the fire not bad for a November day or evening in camp pretty comfortable scenario Time to enjoy a cup of coffee before I turn in for the night. Enjoy this great looking fire coming out of the Solo Stove Ranger. Knowing that when I'm ready to turn in, I can climb into the cargo light at least 60 degrees plus and have a comfortable night's sleep, regardless what the temperature does for the evening. So thanks for joining me on this. It was a pleasure. This is fun. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.